tell me, you have written a book about Fauci uh, and uh, the most, you say, the most powerful man. Uh, uh, I, can, I can barely read the cover from here. I'm sorry. Uh, the most powerful and dangerous bureaucrat in American history. That's quite a statement. 14, 15 months ago, Glenn, we didn't know who Anthony Fauci was. Yeah. And in that short amount of time, uh, he has, without a single vote cast, even by mail, not a single vote cast, has rearranged the lives of every American, every American family, every American business, every American school, every American church. Need I go on to the point, can we actually step outside our homes and breathe free air. That is now a current debate. Now, if that's not the most powerful and dangerous bureaucrat in American history, then uh, by golly, I don't want to know who is. Well, according to the CDC and Joe Biden, if we let our guard down now, we'll see the virus get worse, not better. And I know that Texas let its guard down about 20 days ago, and uh, we're still declining uh, in hospitalizations and infections. This book is a reference guide, Glenn. It, it has more references and footnotes than pages. And a lot of it is how often and, and frequently these people have been wrong. Anthony Fauci told Christy Noem she was going to have 10,000 people in the hospital. She never had more than 600. The last time we heard this emotional lament from our new CDC director, it was her unveiling a map of where it is safe to go to school and for the kids to do extracurricular activities. And Glenn, International Falls, Minnesota was the only place in the dead of freaking winter, Glenn, was the only place safe for kids to be fully back in-person learning with extracurricular activities. I mean, that's just obviously defies any form of common sense. On and on and on it goes. Um, they have lied repeatedly, gaslighted us repeatedly. The previous CDC director told us that a useless face diaper from China would protect him from COVID-19 <laughs> even more than the vaccines. We might as well go outside and rain dance, moon dance. This is flat earth voodoo. It has to stop. And that's why for this book, we bypass the normal publishing process of hardcovers and distribution that takes six months we got to get this in as many people's hands as we can right now. We went right to paperback, but that means we can only sell it at Amazon. That's the only place on earth we could get an audience of this size, this many books. And so that's where you have to get it, unfortunately. But it's got all the information we need to take this to our legislatures, our governors, our city councils, our boards of health, and end this farce once and for all. You call it the Faucian bargain. Uh, that's the name of the book. Um... And I, I love the uh, title, actually, uh, for all of its uh, all of its meaning. W w tell me what you're going to find in this book. I'm an average citizen. I, you know, I, I'm I'm up on it, but not really. Uh, what if, what if, what's in here that is going to help me go to my school board and and to my uh, community and to my senators and congressmen? All the facts and all the data you've largely not been told or shared. There was a recent survey that found our media was the most negative in the world for yeah. COVID-19. I, I, I woke up this morning and I had a UK physician who has written a book and has 60,000 Twitter followers come at me. First thing I see this morning is he comes at me for fake news. And he makes this claim that 0.25% of all people in the UK have died of COVID-19. I just did the math of population and death in three seconds. That's not true. That's his own. That's his. I mean, this is a doctor with a book and 60,000 Twitter followers. You know, this isn't, you know, uh, Pez dispenser me 14 with five people following him. And, and so it, this goes on constantly. I've never seen a stream of dis disinformation like this. People like you and I that have been in this conservative media game for a long time, we've been told for 20 years we need to be more like Sweden. Suddenly we forgot Sweden. them barely knew him. We don't know what a Sweden is. It's like they fell off a map, never existed. The amount of gaslighting that's gone on here, it will all be debunked in this book. And it calls into question, you know, we have numerous elected officials have endorsed this book. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, uh, Senator Rand Paul, Senator Ted Cruz, Congressman Chip Roy. And I'm already bugging those people that are in Washington. We need a 9-11 tribunal, Glenn, to get answers to the two most important questions of this past year that are raised by this book. Number one, how come 
only experts with one particular narrative were considered experts and were mainstreamed and were used by the White House Coronavirus Task Force, our own media, et cetera. When we had experts from the very beginning, from Oxford, the number one university in the world, Harvard, Yale, Carnegie Mellon, Glenn, these are all places that believe in global warming and 57 genders too. And they all thought this was flat earth junk science, these lockdowns, and yet they were totally ignored. We give you all their names, all their citations in this book. We need to know the answer to that. And then number two that we have to get an answer to is what changed from February 28th of last year to March 11th. On February 28th, 2020, Anthony Fauci wrote in the New England Journal of Medicine that when we got done with this, when we looked at the IFR, the infection fatality rate for COVID-19, it would be that of about a, a bad pandemic flu. That's where Trump got his, it's a bad flu talking point. Trump just parroted Fauci his entire final year of his administration. And now look what happened. He's not in the White House. And so he wrote that on February 28th, Glenn. On March 11th, just 11 days later, and just three days after he went on 60 Minutes and told Americans not to wear masks, three days later after that, and 11 days after he wrote that in the New England Journal of Medicine, he went to Congress, said that this was going to be basically Captain Trips, college basketball, and the NBA shut down that night. The country was shut down less than a week later and for the better part of the next year. What changed? What new piece of data did Anthony Fauci acquire? What, what information stream did he get access to from February 28th to March 8th when he was singing a totally different song to March 11th when he sounded the shofar on this thing? We need to know the answer to that. And there's two reasons why, Glenn. Number one, so that we never fall for this form of authoritarianism ever again. But then number two, when, when we finally do to get a contagion that may actually be a, a, his, a history book or biblical level event, and now we've conditioned a bunch of our people to just ignore it because Anthony Fauci is such a fraud. We need to get to the bottom of the truth here, Glenn. Well, uh, they're going to. I mean, they already know the truth, and now the White House is targeting an ad campaign for conservatives. Uh, and they're uh, trying to get the conservatives because they know they're going to be extra hard. They've already gotten all the liberals, they say, to to get the vaccines. Now they just need the conservatives. And so they've got a, a very slick ad campaign that will uh, will convince us all that we all have to get uh, the uh, the vaccine uh, and uh, and and a passport to be able to go back to our lives. This is almost like, I mean, I hate to say this, but if, if they weren't trying to condition us for something in the future, Glenn, what would they be doing differently? Oh, nothing. Nothing. So it's yeah. just a matter of whether this is a, an accidental proto version of something to condition us for in the future or it's intentional malevolence. But the, the end result is just the same. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, I hope the vaccines work. They're experimental vaccines. There is some con conflicting data that's out right now. Every day I look. I get one source, it's conflicting. I get another, it's positive. There's very positive vaccination data right now coming out of Governor DeSantis's Florida, where they have emphasized seniors with one of the largest senior populations, for example. So what I would tell my audience, and you know, I told my audience from the very beginning, vitamin D, vitamin C, work out, get outside, get in the sun. Um, if you've got elderly, if anybody has a sniffle or a cold, you know, social distance unless you test negative. I mean, we haven't just put our heads in the sand on our show about this whatsoever, but we've actually followed established science like Rand Paul was grilling Anthony Fauci with uh, about a week ago in the Senate. When it comes to this vaccine, what I've urged my audience is unless you're in a high risk group or you're elderly, first of all, why are you getting in the way of somebody in the high risk group anyway? That's kind of selfish. Let them go first. And then secondly, just observe the real time data. Uh, we didn't go through a normal FDA approval process. So just observe the real time data about efficacy and safety. Pretty much unless you're under the age of you're over the age of 75 with a immune deficiency. Um, this virus, if you were to get it, you're going to survive it about ninety nine point six percent of the time. So I don't know why you'd be in a hurry to rush out and get an experimental vaccine under those conditions anyway, if you weren't in that, those groups. I mean, Glenn, the median age of death for COVID in America is 78. That's the average lifespan in America. Let me let me read something that a blue check mark uh, wrote yesterday. Vaccine passports are a good idea. Among other things, it will single out the still large contingent of people who refuse vaccines, 
who will be foreclosed from doing a lot of things their peers can do. It will help break the resistance down. Your thoughts on that? Um, my thoughts are the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment uh, amendments to the Constitution have a few things to say about singling people out, creating different classifications of people. No person shall be denied life, liberty, or property without due process of law. That's the Fifth Amendment. The Fourteenth Amendment, the Equal Protection Under the Law Clause. What's happening here is these people are using this to show you what their true malevolent intentions are. If you're pro-vaccination, this is, and you're reasonable, this is the worst messaging you could possibly ask for. You're, you're basically begging people who have already seen their, their livelihoods taken away. I said a friend, a, a pastor from my church just texted me, their kid in the public school was just told to start bringing a second mask because they sweat too much during recess, so they need a oh backup. Gosh. And I'm like, why don't they just have them do rain dances? You know, just might as well do, you know, moon <laughs> dances uh, for the second recess. It'll be just as effective. And so the, they, they just, these people are tyrants, authoritarians. They cannot wait to impose on you. And that's another reason why we had to get this book out in as many people's hands as possible. I think a lot of people, uh, I would urge, uh, I've never done this before. I mean, by going straight to paperback, I'm going to make a lot less money on this. Because it's the information that's important. Buy extra copies. Send them to people that you're pa- that are panic stricken, elderly. You're, you're elderly that have been isolated. Stop doing that. If they've been vaccinated, there's no reason for you to continue isolating with them. The amount of junk science here, literally headlines this morning that say, "Yes, the vaccines worse work, but here's why you still must wear a mask." This is absolute authoritarian garbage. With one exception, Glenn, there there is. There is one exception here that doesn't make this all flat earth voodoo. Would you like to know what it is? Yes. The one exception would be as if the virus is not a natural phenomenon. Because if it's a natural phenomenon, what these people are asserting, this is what Rand was pointing out to, to Anthony Fauci. Uh, you, what you're asserting, uh, is, and this is Scott Atlas's great frustration, we are violating the established laws and precedents of virology, immunology, and biology. So the only reason we would violate yeah. those is if this is not entirely a natural phenomenon. If indeed it was either originated or altered or engineered yep. or modified in a lab. And therefore, if it's been synthesized at all, then we're out, Then we may be outside the natural laws of science. And then maybe we do have to look at things differently. But then that would make Anthony Fauci guilty of treason for lying to the American people for a year Steve. and funding the Wuhan Virus Institute at the same time. Steve Dace, thank you so much. The uh, name of the book is The Fauci and Bargain. Uh, you can find it on Amazon right now. The Fauci and Bargain by Steve Dace.